This is Weed from the Odd Even, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Hey, Chris. Hey, hey John. Hey, John. From the Odd Even. Hey, Chris. How are you? Good, good man. Everybody. How are you? Good, good. So where are you at, John? I am physically in Maryland on the largest island in the Chesapeake Bay, right across from Baltimore. Beautiful. You. We're at, I'm in Richmond, and Chris is in Northern Virginia, right up by you there. Nice. Awesome. I, so. still, I still have yet to see the Chesapeake Bay. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's pretty big. If you're anywhere in, in Virginia, I think you just kind of head east. You'll run into it, right, pretty much? I, I don't I, know. I want to go to that uh, Chincoteague, I think it's called. Is that where the horses run? It is, yeah. Chincoteague and Assateague, they run between the two, yeah. I, I want to get out there one day, and I've lived here for 15 years and keep saying I'm going to do it, and somehow it just never happens, but I need to get myself out there. So I'll give you a warning. If you ever go camping anywhere down there and you're actually doing it old school with a tent, mm-hmm. make sure you don't leave any food in your tent because if you leave and come back, the horses will have shredded your tent and taken your food. No, really? <laughs> That true story. I went out one night to uh, to a bar with a bunch of folks and came back and I said, I know it's dark and I'm a little bit drunk, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure I had a tent here. And they were like, um, I think I see pieces of your tent. <laughs> the whole tent. Oh, the, the horses just took the whole thing and ripped it apart oh to get God. to like Doritos and, and maybe an open bottle of liquor or something. So. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I wouldn't nice. want to see that horse dung. Yeah, no. <laughs> I ended up sleeping in my car for two days. It was great. So. Can you imagine seeing a drunk horse running down the beach? Yeah. With a piece of tent <laughs> hanging out its ass. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right. Well, there's John, a way to start a podcast. Oh, yeah. John, I don't know if you've ever listened to the, our, this podcast before, but uh, Chris is a little uh, off, so it goes down the dumper really quick. Oh, so please. Just, just bear with us. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And, and try, try not to hang up, but... Um, what I was going to ask you is if for fans not familiar with the odd even, can you give us a two room boardroom pitch or two room, two sentence boardroom pitch? How's that? Sure. We're, uh, we're melodic hard rock, uh, based in Baltimore. Um, you know, we kind of, uh, were raised on that whole nineties, 2000 sound and, uh, we don't shy away from, from the comparisons. Um, so there's my, there's my two second pitch. Perfect. When you say nineties, 2000 sound, what do you mean? I mean, anything from Alice in Chains to Soundgarden to Stone Temple Pilots to Fuel to Saliva to, you know, anywhere in that genre. Gotcha. I, lo- I haven't heard of Saliva in a long time, but, man, I used to love that band. Yeah, we actually um, we did a show with them, I guess it was about a year and a half ago, down in, uh, in Nashville. And just a great group of guys, man. It was really cool to, to hang out with them. And to your point, you know, it's, it's always fun when you're – when you're digging somebody's music and they end up sharing the stage with them. So that was a really cool night. Was Josie back in the band then? No, uh-uh. no. Cause I, I think I saw something that he is now, right? You know, I think that rumor has been going on for a while. I mean, obviously right now nobody's playing, but, um, but at last check, no, I, I don't think that ever happened. I think they were oh, talking really? about do, doing something with the 20th reunion of, you know, the big record. And, um, you know, I, I don't know if that ever went down, but I mean, hell who knows right now, nobody's doing anything. So, yeah, I know. Yeah, How are you guys managing with this, uh, with all this nonsense? Are you doing anything different to keep in contact with your fans? Um, we are. I mean, it, it's kind of crazy how this band developed, you know, about, uh, it's been just about a year now. And, um, you yeah, know, we picked up the, from the ashes of another band, uh, the guitar player, E.T. and I. And, you know, we basically set out, we said, hey, we want a, a singer in this genre and, you know, we want to get a good drummer and let's book a bunch of gigs and then go and record and, and go out and take on the world. And so we, you know, quickly got the lineup together. Um, you know, we booked a, a, a little tour with uh, we did some shows with uh, Nonpoint and Soulfly. We played with the guys in uh, uh, Last in Line, which were, you know, the, the, the yeah, surviving the deal, members. Right. Yeah, so we we're kind of picking up anything like that where we could get on a bill and then, you know, just get the name out there. And then we we're like, let's go in and record. And we went and did that in January. 
And, and lo and behold, we thought it'd be, you know, really cute to put this thing out on 420 being that, you know, everyone calls me weed. That's my last name right? and all this stuff. And, and who knew there was going to be a pandemic that just kind of just destroyed like all momentum. It was like, oh, my God. So we, we put this out and, and we're ready to do dates. And, you know, the dates have been canceled and postponed and pushed back. And, you know, we still got a few that are on life support, you know, that are, you know, in September, we've got three shows down in Florida. One of them's with uh, slaughter and LA guns. Oh, wow. um, we're supposed to do uh Jersey shore festival, um, which may or may not happen. We're supposed to do a festival over here in Maryland. Um, with, I mean, who knows, you know, at this point, it, it's kind of crazy. So we've certainly been trying to keep the, uh, you know, the promotional hype going. We partnered with, um, with the guys at pavement and, um, they've been awesome. Um, really pushing the, the new video that we put out and, and, uh, you know, driving people to, uh, to Spotify and all that good stuff. But right. it's, it's been a struggle, man. Just like it has for anybody. Yeah. We do a lot of work with pavement. Uh, they seem to get behind their artists pretty good. Yeah. They're, they're amazing. That's cool. It, Chris, it's a strange time to be a musician. I mean, it's a strange time to be alive, just generally speaking, <laughs> but yeah. the, uh, the musician side of things and the, and the venue side of things, you know, it has the ability to really be fucked for quite a while. So how how are you kind of planning to overcome some of those obstacles, like venues shutting down because they can't keep open? Yeah, I, you know what? I, I don't know. I mean, everything's still really an unknown. I mean, we're doing as much as we can, you know, on, on social media. And like I said, partnering with Pavement was was great for, you know, keeping us out there and keeping us in everyone's eye and and, you know, hopefully relevant, um, you know, we're, we're doing things like interviews with you good people to, like, again, keep us out there. But I, I mean, who knows? It's just it's a shame, you know, like literally you get something on, on the, you know, on the calendar, on the schedule and you're, you're preparing for it. And like I said, we've got, you know, six shows or whatever in, in September that are totally on life support. I, I fully right. expect them to be canceled. I mean, a couple of months ago we were looking and saying, oh, you know what? Everything's screwed up in the Northeast. We don't want to go to New York or anywhere like that because it's the hotbed. And, you know, certainly Maryland has had its moments of shutdown and we're slowly climbing out because I think, you know, the state did a pretty good job of, you know, shutting it down enough to, to prevent, you know, major spread. But you look at the areas in the South and stuff where they were just like, oh, this is just bullshit. Let's go with it. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, right. you know, I mean, they're just, it's wildfire down there. So I'm not sure I want to go down there, even if they say the gig's on, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I 100% agree. I was, I was looking at that this weekend and I was just like, holy fuck. <laughs> yeah. Pardon my language. I mean, but man. yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm all about, you know, wearing a mask. I got no problem doing that. And I think it's the right thing to do. And, and I would even do that probably on stage, but you know, you put me in front of 2,500 people in a, a tightly packed room and I'm pretty sure I don't want to be in that Petri dish. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Right. 100%. Yeah. I don't want to become a heavy metal science experiment either. Yeah. No, I, I kind of already am. So let's, let's not push the limits too yeah. much. You know? <laughs> By the same token, though, we were talking about it earlier with somebody else. I totally miss going to shows and I can't see how this plays out and, you know, when we're going to be able to get back to probably never what we had, but something that resembles it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy. We just, you know, we picked up a few endorsements the other day, and uh, one of them is, is Clayton USA, the pick company, and they sent us a bunch of custom picks and all this stuff. And, you know, as we're reading through the contract, it's saying, you know, make sure you throw these out off stage and give them to people. And I was like, what's this stage stuff you guys are talking <laughs> right. about? You know, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'd be, I got no problem doing that. If you find me a stage where, you know, nobody's going to die from this pandemic, I'm, right. I'm down. You know, where's that at? North Pole? Let's go, you know? <laughs> Well, they were Bruce and I were talking about this earlier with the social distancing metal concert that took place. Where was it in Finland or Germany or somewhere? I think it was Germany, maybe. And they drew circles on the floor for people, and you had to wear a mask, and everyone was spaced apart, and it was like the band played, but you couldn't like get up close to the stage or whatever. Or get like, out of your circle. You couldn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Couldn't leave your circle. I mean, you know, I've played in a bunch of different genres of, of bands, you know, over the years and stuff. And that might fly for some things, but for, you know, a hard rock band like the Odd Even, I mean, we get on stage and we live off that energy. I mean, it's it's going to be really weird if that's how the world changes. Um, you know, I mean, you just expect people to be up front and be sweaty and, you know, push it against the barrier or against the, 
the stage and, you know, you kind of thrive off that. It makes you jump around and get into the music. And, you know, it's going to be really strange, you know, with if if we can't get this thing under control and that's how the world ends up being. You know what I mean? I mean, we, we all hope for a vaccine and we go back to some sort of uh, uh, normalcy. But, you know, <laughs> that, that seeing, seeing circles drawn around a bunch of people out in a field seems very weird, you know? <laughs> yeah, it would seem it like does. an alien concert, like. <laughs> When's yeah. the UFO going to come down and pluck me up, you know? That's, that's right. <laughs> so I've got to be honest, and I might be in the minority here. If that is the only way for me to get back to hearing, you know, getting my ears ringing again and hearing some live music and seeing a band perform and supporting them, I'm in. Even if yeah. it's just for a little bit of time. I mean, I just I need to get to a show. Yeah. No, you're not, you're not kidding. I mean, I, I need to get to a show. I need to see my friends that are in bands. I, I need right. to get on stage myself. Um, and the know. community. It's a community, yeah. right? I mean, you need all, you need the whole thing. That's how we thrive. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, we actually uh, rehearse in a, in a studio space in Baltimore that's got, I don't even know, I'm going to say probably 24 different rented like studio spaces. So, I mean, you've got, on any given night, you know, there's probably at least 10 bands that are, either writing, recording, you know, making a video, all that kind of stuff. And it's just strange. I mean, it's, it's a ghost town. Um, you know, if you see somebody, you don't really want to see them. You kind of want to wave from afar, you know, <laughs> right. Okay. He's going, he's going down hallway B. I'm going to, I'm going to turn left at C and go down over here. And then I'm going to come back around. So we don't actually have to talk to each other, see each other. You know, it's strange. It's really, really, really a weird time. It's, it's, it is weird, but I, I actually, I think that we'll probably see some relief. There's a there's a Canadian company that that that's invented this nose spray that stops right. that stops the virus from being able to actually um, take take root in your body. But you have to use it every day. So hey, whatever whatever it takes, I'm yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, I'd do it too, man. Fuck it, right? Yeah, hundred percent. So uh, what do you have so- planned? What do you have planned? Are you guys working on new stuff? I know you've got stuff coming up, but in this time where you're not really playing live, are you just like building up the catalog so you're ready when it releases? Yeah, I mean, pretty much. And it actually kind of works in our favor a little bit. Um, you know, we kind of went whirlwind with this whole thing. It's like, okay, here's the band. We got seasoned players. You know, I've worked as you know a booking agent before. I've worked at an indie label. You know, I've got a lot of contacts. And it was like, how do we get out there and get on the road? You know, let's go do this stuff. And, and we really didn't have a lot of time to be – you know, super cohesive and, 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 you know, sit together and, and say, Hey, look, this is what we're going to do. We went in and recorded an EP and, you know, we've got like another 10 to 20 songs that are kind of ready to go. And then we probably got like another 20 that are all like ideas and stuff. And the nice thing about this is that, you know, you can go ahead and with technology, you know, say, Hey, let's do a, a zoom meeting or a Skype or whatever and say, here's a couple ideas and, you know, send stuff, you know, audio files back and forth and, you know, we can all work on them in different environments. Um, we have recently just started getting together, but like I said, it's, you know, we're standing in four corners of a, a, you know, a 15 by 15 room, like don't get too close to me and you know, all this stuff. And it's, it's kind of strange, you know, I mean, like I said, I lived on, live on an Island and my drummer lives, you know, two doors down from the studio basically. So he's in the city where he's got a lot more, you know, chance of, you know, possible infection where I can really, social distance like crazy you know i mean there's oh yeah <laughs> it's 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 a lot different so you know the few times i've been up there it's it's one of those things where you know i know he's been super safe and all this stuff but at the same time i'm like i got a distinct advantage over here versus being directly in the middle of the city you know oh yeah absolutely you just and you just don't know right like you just don't know who has it or if they have it or if they've even had it or whatever so it's, it's yeah i mean that, that's really the terrifying thing i mean my parents are in their 80s and stuff and it's you know uh you like going over to see them it's like you know let's let's stand outside and i'll stay far away from you because the last thing i want to see is you know anything that i've done by going to 7-eleven or whatever you know brings this thing on for you guys you yeah. know because right. they won't make it you know what i mean absolutely absolutely yeah we had um, <laughs> there was a huge party on the 4th of July, a few doors down from me. And the guy comes out, he's like, come on over. I'm like, no. Uh, yeah, probably not. Yeah. I'll be sitting on my deck drinking beer. I'm not going over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's, uh, that, that's a smart move for longevity. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, I just wanted to be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. You know, like, matter of fact, I'm going to call the cops because this is not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's technically legal, right? But it's yeah, like, yeah. it's still, I don't know, seems irresponsible. I think unethical for sure. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, who it, am I? I'm just some random dude, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but no, I mean, like I said, I mean, having the, 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 the I guess what you'd call a, a setback is actually probably going to be a pretty good thing for us. Um, you know, we've actually been able to work out different things with some of like even our light show that we probably wouldn't have had time to do, you know, where before it was like, OK, this guy's a really good light man. Let's get him on board and throw him in the back of the van and let's get on the road. And, you know, now it's well, hang on a minute. Let's take some time. And this is how the set's going to go. And this song's going to do this. So. I fully expect that kind of stuff to help us out if we ever do get back to normal. Um, and then, you know, just the kind of the, the, the ease of passing stuff around you. Know, this morning I got up, I had a couple ideas in my head. You know, I broke out the guitar and went down, laid down a couple of tracks with, you know, a drum machine and, and, and off it went to my guitar player. And then, you know, my singer will get it tonight and, and, you know, we'll see where it goes. So I fully expect that this is going to help us out as far as, you know, maybe even some stronger material and, and definitely honing our direction. That's awesome. I think, Chris? I think so, man. Um, I, I personally am taking a very positive look on all of this. And I think the first thing is, is that technology is going to go through the roof at a rate oh, yeah. that we've never seen. And I also think yep. we're going to get back to normal sooner than we think. Right. I hope you're right. I, I, think- I mean, yeah, I, I mean, this is a little different than, you know, somebody getting, uh, you know, getting the sniffles or something. I mean, this is a pandemic. So hopefully we've got the greatest minds around the world that are working on this. And, you know, the folks that got the money can throw some money at it and, and fix this. Um, it's like you said, I mean, it, it, for somebody that's been playing and, you know, came up, you know, playing rock and, and all this stuff, it's, it's just brutal to have a summer with no shows where, and, and you know, as I said before, not only me not being on stage, but not being able to go see stuff. Oh, yeah, that's what's killing me. It's festival season. Yeah. Oh, I know. It, we we we've missed. Uh, well, well, we'll be missing Judas Priest in September. We missed Lamb right. of God, Megadeth. I and yeah, yeah. Death Fest. And Death Fest. I missed. Yep. I missed. Uh, I'll be missing uh, Gojira and Deftones. Uh, uh, you're not missing much there. Hey, fuck you, man. <laughs> Okay, what's your opinion on Gojira? Uh, I have no opinion. (laughs) What he's saying is he agrees with me. Yeah, pretty much. You know, I mean, I'm into I'm into whatever. You know, and 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 as long as it's it's cool, and and by cool I mean if it's musically badass or it's a good song or there's you know art in it. I mean, if there's something to it. Hey, I'll go see a cool show whenever, however, whatever it is. Um, that being said, there's there's plenty of bands out there that I can name that I would go see that show that I would probably never listen to on Spotify or get a CD or whatever. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. The one that I, the one that pisses me off is Missing Ramstein or Ramstein, however you say. It. Yeah. 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 Like I I don't really listen to them that much, but their show is just so over the top. Yeah, right. absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I mean, there's there's times where, you know, I'm like, hey, let me listen to that. Or, you know, I'll go back to like ministry or something like that. And that's not something I listen to every day. But damn, if ministry wasn't coming around and there wasn't a pandemic, I'd be like, let's go see ministry. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, Fucking well, pandemic. Cool, Fuck COVID. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was funny, it was funny when, we, when we um when we started talking with the uh, working with the pavement guys. I told him, I said, you know, a couple of years ago uh, in my previous band, I said we played at um, the Blue Ridge Rock Festival with, uh, you know, with Lamb of God and Saliva and Puddle of Mud. And uh, I think Tantric was on the main stage with us that day. And I was like, we got to get on that. And they just started laughing. There's like, there's no way in hell that festival's happening. <laughs> and I was I was like, yeah, so we shouldn't worry about it. He's like, yeah, don't worry about it. Sure enough, the other day they, they pulled the plug on that. And I was just like, I, I mean, I, I was stunned that it took that long but i was like man if that's gonna go off that's gonna be a a hard one to not want to be on that show you know what i mean oh yeah oh yeah no it's it it's crazy man it's crazy times but we'll get through it together and and i agree anyway if fans want to find out about the odd even uh you want to go ahead and drop your sites for us and 
where they can get the the most out of it? Sure. I mean, I'm a little old school, so probably the easiest way to do it is just right to our website. It's just theoddeven.com. Pretty easy stuff. Um, obviously, we're on Facebook, uh, you know, YouTube channel. Um, I think we're up to like 32,000 views of our new video, which is awesome. Um, certainly, you can find the music on Spotify. I mean, we're literally on everything. So uh, if you can't find us, I'd be stunned. Um, there is some mathematician, I guess, that's maybe from uh, – probably from India or Pakistan, somewhere over there that, that has some odd even stuff on there. If you see that and it doesn't sound like hard rock, that's not us. Go back to the odd even.com navigate. You can find the alien theme and all that good stuff. And uh, you go from there, you start hearing some music as opposed to math. You're, you're on the right track. Awesome. Thank awesome. you, man. Hey, thank yeah, you very much. You. Good luck with the, uh, the record, good luck with all your music, and hopefully uh, we get back to uh, bumping into, because we're neighbors, so we're bumping into each other again. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Stay in touch, and uh, like I said, man, stay up with the uh, the shows, and I'll, I'll try to hit you guys up, and hopefully we, we can uh, connect soon on a Baltimore, D.C. show, something like that, or Richmond. Sweet, uh, man. That'd be wonderful. All right, man, be well. Take care. Okay, guys. See you. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. Bye,